everyone, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards and I'm really excited to be teaching you this brand new project today using our fabulous new Clematis Flower Stamp and Die along with our Spring Foliage and our beautiful um, new Geometric Background Die as well. These are really useful stamp and dies that um, are going to be used all the time in your collection and I'm super excited to show them to you. So the first item that we're going to be using for this project is the beautiful Clematis Flower Stamp and Die Set. This is all coming to you in our brand new packaging as well. So you've got three stamps and three dies contained within here. If we open this up, you can see you've got your beautiful die set that's got all of your lovely dies in there. And you've got your A6 stamp plate as well. These stamp and dies all have a little way for you to line them up as well. So on the top of the polymer, there's a little notch on one of the petals. If I bring that in really close, you'll be able to see there. Okay. And then on the die, we've got that little notch again. Can you see at the top? So what that means is as long as you stamp your petal like straight up, place your die over the top and the notches are in the same place, you're going to get a perfect stamped image and die cut every single time. So that's our beautiful Clematis flower stamp. Pop those back into the packet there. We are also going to be using our gorgeous spring foliage stamp collection. This is a really beautiful set of stamps. You've got some leaves in here, you've got the beautiful swirl and you've got the little berry branch as well. Really, really pretty, absolutely gorgeous designs in there. We've got the lovely new sentiment stamps as well. These are the happy birthday sentiments. So you've got little mini verses in here like may everything that makes you happy be yours today and always. Wishing you the most wonderful birthday that's filled with all your favourite things. Hope lots of lovely surprises are coming your way to make your birthday a fabulous day. And then you've got these beautiful solid silhouette sentiments as well. So they are absolutely beautiful. So they are our um, happy birthday sentiment stamps. And we are also going to be using one of our gorgeous new background stamps. So this is the geometric background. And you can see how it's like a geometric kind of cube star kind of design. It is absolutely beautiful when you see this used. You are going to use this so, so much. It looks such a plain stamp in the packaging, but when you actually start to use this, it is absolutely incredible, some of the finished effects that you can do with it. And I'm going to show you one of those today. So we'll get started. I'm going to pop a link to the website across the bottom of the page. You can see it's chloescreativecards.co.uk, of course, where you can hop on and buy any of the products. I'll link literally everything in the description below. And if you go over to our blog, which is chloescreativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs, forward slash news, there'll be a full write up of this card with any measurements that you may need or anything like that. Okay then, so we will get going. So this is going to be our project today. So it's like a little gatefold card. Really, really pretty. Really, e ooh, really easy to create. Okay, a little bit difficult to open mid-air there. But you can see how gorgeous this is going to look when it's stood up on a mantelpiece. It is absolutely beautiful. A really pretty card. So you can see how we're going to be creating these flowers with all of the depth and dimension. And we're also going to be stamping and embossing onto acetate to create the foliage. And I'm going to show you how to create this amazing background as well so what we're going to do to get started is i'm going to show you the background first so i've got my stamp all nice and ready on my acrylic block now these stamps are huge they are like dl in size so you do need a large acrylic block to pop them on on the website we've got some of the extra large stamp and stash acrylic blocks they are amazing and they are what i would recommend to pop um, this stamp on it fits absolutely perfectly as you can see the blocks are nice and thin as well, so when you put pressure on them, they flex. So what that means is you're going to get a nice even pressure all over the stamp when you start stamping. Okay then, so to get started, I've got a piece of our Rose Quartz Luxury Pearl card. I'm going to give it a little dust over with an anti-static bag, so I always pounce the bag to make sure there's some powder in there. And then just give it a dust over. This is going to get rid of any um, static that might be on the paper, any fingerprints, anything like that. So I would definitely recommend investing in one of those if you haven't got one already. I'm going to be using the Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad to do some stamping and embossing next. So we're going to grab in this fabulous um, geometric background stamp and we're going to ink it up using our Clear Embossing Ink Pad. So lots of tapping all over the image like so so you can see how you can just work your way across inking this up and adding all of that brilliant ink onto our stamped image here like so 
so okay so we've got that nicely inked up and then we are going to take some more opaque bright white super fine embossing powder to heat this one up with so we're going to stamp it down first i'm going to position that in place where i want it and then you want firm even pressure all over the stamp like so so you can just work your way around applying the pressure keep one hand on the stamp at all times and use the other to press and then you can lift off and we will have a beautiful stamped image there okay so we're going to grab in our scrap paper and we're going to take our white embossing powder to pop onto here so this is the wow opaque bright white super fine embossing powder it's a really nice fine grade of powder but it um, heats to a lovely bright white finish which is exactly what we want for this project so we just pop that onto there and then tap off the excess and any excess is going to go straight back into the jar like so okay and then we're going to heat this up so what we're going to do is take our heat gun to start with and we're going to just turn it on and then we'll just start to heat this so as soon as that powder goes to a lovely bright white finish like it's just starting to in this corner i'm just going to start and move the heat gun over the image like so how we are just like chasing the embossing powder all of the image Okay, and then you can see how that background stamp is really popping now it just looks absolutely fabulous so what i'm going to do now is take some dries clear glue so i'm using the art glitter dries clear glue along with the fine tip metal applicator and what we're going to do is just start to infill all of these squares now i've got one that i've already done at home that i've pre-prepped so i'm just going to do a few to show you so what I tend to do is just go around the edge and you've got that lovely little ridge of embossing to work up to and then infill the centre using your glue like so. Okay and you can work your way along and just infill all of the squares. For time I'm just going to do a small little section just to show you but this really is nice and easy to do so you can just infill all of the detail on there like so then I'm going to take my um, Crystallina glitter. So this is one of our fabulous Sparkalicious glitters, which is absolutely beautiful. Again, you can pick this up on the website. We're going to sprinkle that over. So you can see how I've infilled those squares there. Now they look a little bit uneven at the moment, but once the glue dries, it'll dry down flat. So I'm going to show you the difference when this has dried. Because I've got one that I've already done. So I'll just pop that to one side out of the way. And then I'll bring the panels in that I've done. So you can see how when the glue dries, you get all of the glitter shining through. I don't know whether you're picking that up on the camera or not, but it really is nice and sparkly, the background. So you've got all of that detail on there, but then where you've got where we've put the glitter on, you can see how you get the pink shining through from underneath because we use that lovely dry clear glue. But you can see what a difference that does so what i've done is i've done two of those panels okay and we'll start to make the base of our card up so what i've done is i've got an um a two seven by seven card blanks and i've just cut half of the front off so i've cut three and a half inches off the front of each one we're going to stick those two together with a little bit of glue i either use the dry clear glue or i do like my kalal glue as well either or A little bit of glue on the back there 
and then we're just going to slide that into place so we've got the two card blanks that stick together of course if you had larger sheets of card you could do this in one but i personally don't so i just tend to stick my card blanks together like so so what we're going to do now is i've cut two strips of um rose quartz pearl card ready to go on the front here but what i like to do is i like to edge my layers so i do that by using a chisel tip glue pen and some of that fabulous crystalline glitter again so this is the chisel tip glue pen that i use we do have them available on the website so all i do is just drag that down the side then i take my crystalline glitter and sprinkle it over like so you can see how we can start to add the sparkle just to the as like a little border on our card here so you can see how we've got that little border just going around the side there too so i'm going to do exactly the same on the next one And then we're going to just put our sparklicious glitter over the top again. So we're just creating this little border all the way around the side of our card. Okay, and then we're going to stick this onto the front of our gate hold card. So we are going to grab in our card blank again. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back again i either use the dries clear glue or the kalal all purpose either or whichever one i can get my mitts on so we'll pop that onto there i'm just going to stick that on flat i'm going to do exactly the same at the other side as well so we'll stick that onto there okay so you can see now how we've got those stuck to the front of our card blank what we're now going to do is i've got some pieces of white card that i've just trimmed down to size so these will just fit on the front of here and these are sized to perfectly fit hopefully my little panels on too so there's just a very fine white board around the side actually what i think i might do i would like a little bit more of a white border so what i would do is just take my guillotine and just take a tiny bit more off each side just so then when you're happy with it which i am now that's fine just check the other one as well yeah that one looks all right i think i just cut that one a little bit too big that sometimes happens but you can always take your guillotine and just take a fraction more off so what i'm going to do now is stick these panels onto my um white cards so i'm going to just use a little bit of glue onto the back of here of course you can use double-sided tape if you wanted to i'm just more of a kind of glue crafter kind of girl i never get things stuck down straight so for me glue works better okay that's that one do exactly the same with this one so I'm only putting a very small amount of glue on it. Probably looks like I'm putting quite a bit on, but there's actually not much on there at all. I'm just applying it very, very thinly. Stick that one onto there too. So you can see how that then starts to come together, like so. And then we're going to flip that over. I haven't got a little bit of glue in that corner there. Tiny bit. There we go better this is sometimes what you find what you can do as well is if you just take some paper and just give it a, a rub over you can get it stuck down nicely just takes a couple of seconds for that glue to grab okay i have even been known sometimes to put things under my craft mash <laughs> while i'm crafting to let them dry a little bit there we go that's better so what we're going to do now is put some foam pads onto the back of these this is just to give a little bit of dimension to the card same on this one and we'll take the backs off these 
going to go onto there, like so, and this one's going to go obviously on the other side, so it's nice and matching. So you can see there how we've got that fabulous background but doesn't that stamp look amazing when you look at it in the packet i'm going to see if i can grab it to show you when you look at it in the packaging it, it looks quite plain but when you see it done look at the kind of effects that you can be creating at home you can be making your own backing papers with these imagine paper piecing them as well that would look amazing too so that's the start of our um gatefold card so what we're going to do next is I'm going to do the sentiment. So I've taken just a circle die cut. I do believe these are tonic. I've taken a scalloped one and I've die cut one out of pink and I've die cut one out of white. We're going to stamp our sentiment onto the white one. So the sentiment that I've chosen is wishing you the most wonderful birthday that's filled with all your favourite things. So we're going to take that and we're going to take our um, little anti-static bag. Give that a little dust round and then we're going to grab in our clear embossing ink pad again. Yeah, ink up the sentiment. We're going to place that down in the centre and we're going to press. So you want firm even pressure all over the stamp. We'll then lift that off and we're just going to use some silver embossing powder to heat this one up. So the embossing powder that I'm using is the Wow Metallic Silver Super Fine. Again, this is really an essential for your craft box. It's just a plain silver embossing powder. And just tap off the excess. It's going to go back into the jar. And then we're going to heat this up using our heat gun again. So just bring my heat gun in. So we're just going to hold the heat gun still and then as soon as that powder starts to melt and change I'm just moving that heat gun over the image like so. And there we go, so you can see how we've got that lovely sentiment there and none of the details being lost either in the text, it just embosses absolutely perfectly. So I'm going to use my chisel tip glue pen again and I'm going to use that fabulous crystallina glue there. And we're just going to edge around the side. So what I do is just turn the circle, keep dragging the pen towards me. Just do it in little stages, as you can see here. Then we're just going to work our way around. And you can see how we've then got that little glittery border going all the way around the edge there. I'm going to do exactly the same on the pink one. So I'm just going to take my pen, work him round. And then we're going to just dunk this into the crystalline glitter. And you can see again, because that glue dries clear, it gives it, you get the pink shining through from underneath so that looks really pretty on the sentiment too so we're going to stick the pink circle onto the scalloped white one just flat so just use a little bit of glue for this and there we go and then we'll put our sentiment for the um on the circle in the middle so again, just a few foam pads in the centre, just to give it a bit of dimension. That's going to go on top of there, like so. And then we're going to just pop this on the card. Now it's really important when you stick this on that you only put your glue down one half. And because we're sticking this directly onto glitter, I would recommend you use the PVA glue to do this. So if we stick that down there, can then see oops, how we've got our sentiment in the middle it just needs a few seconds just for the glue to grab there we go you can see how that's in the middle of the card there now okay so i'm just going to get that that's not quite straight a bit more glue on there There we go, 
that's better okay so still not quite <laughs> quite central sorry i'll be here all day kind of just tweaking it a little bit you know right so we're going to pop that to one side now and i'm going to show you how to create these fabulous flowers which are these ones here okay so what i've done is i've taken some of our fabulous rose quartz and this is the paper that i'm using now so i'm using the pearl paper again i always take my anti-static bag give my card a little dust over with that and then i'm going to take my stamps now if you die cut in if you want to die cut first and then stamp over the top of course you can or you can do it the other way around but you might have to play about with your plates for your die cutting machine but we do have a video up on the channel explaining and showing you all of that so we're going to ink power stamp lots of light tapping we're going to place this down and we're going to press so you want firm even pressure all over the stamp like so then we're going to lift that off and we're going to use that fabulous opaque bright white super fine embossing powder again to heat this one up so we're going to take our opaque bright white sprinkle that over then tap off the excess and you can see how we've got those flowers beautifully stamped out there I'm just going to put my embossing powder back into the pot there. I'm going to use that again in a moment. We're going to heat up our um, flowers using our heat gun. So all I'm doing is holding my heat gun still. And then as soon as that powder is melting and changing to a lovely bright white, I'm just moving the heat gun over the image. So, then if we lift those up, you can see how we've got all of that lovely um, embossed detail on there. So, I'm just going to grab in my scissors, which I've buried somewhere on my desk. I think I've got another pile, just grab over, get those ones from over there. I'm going to just roughly cut these out and I'm going to show you how I glittered them because I've already got some that I've cut already at home. So, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take this in. Again, our glitter dries clear glue is amazing. We're going to just go in, add little dots of glue onto the stamens of the flowers. Just do one to show you for time because I've got them all pre-prepared. And then we're going to go in with our fabulous Razzle Dazzle glitter, which is this one here. So this is like a, a crystalline type glitter, so any colour it's going to pick up from underneath, but it's a little bit more chunky. So when we sprinkle that over and tap off the excess, you can see how that then just adds the little dots into the middle of the flower there. Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to bring in the ones that I've already done. Okay, so I've got two large ones. We're all cut out. I've got two small and I've got two medium ones here as well. So I've got two of each size of the stamp. What we're going to do to shape these is we're going to hold the flower in the middle and we're just going to curl it between our finger and thumb. So nothing too difficult at all. That's all that we are going to do. So we're just curling these between your finger and thumb. Really, really easy to do. Nothing too difficult at all. We're going to do this with all the different sizes as well. So you can just see how you can work round and just curl the petals. It's really, really easy to do. I always tend to hold the centre of the flower as well and it just gives it a little bit more strength for holding on to the petals there for when you're shaping them. We can just work round like so, building those up. Okay, then we're going to layer these together now. So to do that, I'm going to grab in my Kalal all-purpose glue. 
and this is the 3D, uh, not the all purpose, sorry, this one's the 3D glue gel. And this is brilliant because it's going to add depth and dimension to the flowers. I'm just going to take the end off of there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is put a blob of glue gel just into the middle of the flower like so. We're going to take the second flower that's the same size, pull the petals towards you, pop it on top and just give it a little twist like so and you can see how that then creates that lovely flower shape so we're going to do these like this and then we're going to pop them to one side while we do the acetate layer so we're going to do exactly the same and this one here again just building those little petals up you can see there and exactly the same on this one here helps if you don't drop them there we go but you can see how that is all nicely built up now so we'll pop those to one side and then what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of stamping and embossing onto acetate to do the top layers of these lovely flowers so we're going to grab a sheet of heat resistant acetate in is this here we're going to take our anti-static bag again and give it a little dust over and then we're going to rub in that anti-static into the acetate like so you want to make sure you've got enough anti-static on here but you don't want to have too much on that's why i tend to give it a little rub over like that afterwards then we're going to take our flower stamps and we're going to ink them up and stamp them so again i'm using the wow clear embossing ink pad I'm going to just ink these up you want to make sure that your ink pad's nice and juicy and you get plenty of ink on your stamp okay so what we're going to do now is stamp this down onto the acetate so i'm going to stamp that there and then we're going to press so you want firm even pressure all over the flowers and then we're going to lift those off and hopefully we'll have a perfect stamped image onto the acetate. One thing I would say when you're stamping and embossing onto acetate or stamping onto acetate in general is always keep one hand on your stamp and use the other hand to press. It'll just stop you from sliding. You can see there how we've got a perfect stamped image of each of those beautiful flowers. Okay, so what we're going to do now is heat this up so i'm just using my heat gun i'm going to hold my heat gun still and then as soon as that powder starts to melt and change i'm just going to move my heat gun over the image like so what we're then going to do is i'm going to roughly cut these out Okay, and what you would do is cut each of these flowers out. I'll just show you how to cut one out, just to show you. So I just use my scissors, I go in. You don't have to be too neat with acetate, to be honest. You can be quite rough with how you cut it out. Because when you see it on the project, if you've got any outline or anything like that, you're not really going to see it. So we can just work our way around, like so, cutting out these flowers. Okay, so you'd obviously cut all of yours out and then what you're going to do is go in with some dries clear glue again. So again, the Arc Litter Designer dries clear glue is amazing. I'm working on the top side of the acetate, so that's basically where the raised embossing is. And I'm going in and just putting a little dot of glue onto each of the little stamens. And then I'm going to take my Razzle Dazzle Glitter again, sprinkle that over and then tap off the excess. So you can see there how we've got the glitter on the flowers. Now again, I've got one that I've already done so it's all nice and dry. So I'm going to pop that one over to one side. I'm going to put my glitter back into the jar. Thank you. 
here and I'm going to show you what we do next. So you're going to take your fabulous acetate layers that are all nice and dry. You're going to go around and pull each of the flowers towards you like so. So you're putting like a crease at the base of the petal. Now to be honest with you, if a little bit of your embossing powder cracks off, I wouldn't be too worried. It's just because of the pressure and what we, we're doing to kind of manipulate the acetate. But by the time you get a jewel in the middle of the flower, you're not really going to see it. But you can see there how much depth and dimension that's given the flower. So we're going to do exactly the same with this one here. Just working round. Again, if a little bit of embossing cracks off, I'm not too concerned, to be honest. Basically, with embossing powder, on paper, it kind of has something to bond to because paper is like a porous surface. Whereas, obviously, the heat-resistant acetate is um, it's a plastic. So, your embossing powder is kind of sitting on the surface. So, obviously, when you try and bend and manipulate it like we are now, you, are gonna, you probably are going to get a little bit that cracks off, but I honestly would not worry about it. Okay, so we're going to scrunch that up in the middle, like so, so you can see we've got those fabulous three-dimensional flowers now. We're going to bring the smaller the paper flowers in that we were making earlier, and we're going to take the 3D glue gel again, pop a blob on the back of the acetate layer, and then we're just going to layer these on the top. like so. so you can see how you can really layer these up if i just hold this one up to show you you can see how beautiful that flower then looks with the acetate layer so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take some little beads and again i think we all craft and we all kind of collect things over the years <laughs> these are something that i've collected so these are just some little they're actual proper beads that you can thread but i thought they make nice little flower centers so I'm going to just stick these in the middle with a little bit of glue gel. Like so. So then you can see how those flowers have come together. I'm a little bit reluctant to handle them too much because obviously they're still quite wet. Okay, but you can see there how beautiful they now look. So I'm going to pop those to one side for now and I'm going to show you how to create this fabulous little swirl to start with. Okay, so you're going to need four of these for your project. So you're going to need a stamp and emboss four of this beautiful swirl under some heat resistant acetate. Okay, I'm just going to pop mine onto a block because I just need to swap my stamps over. There we go. I'm grabbing our heat resistant acetate again. So I'm just going to do one to show you, but you need to do four for this project. Give it a little dust with our anti-static again. Straight in there with our clear embossing ink pad. And then we're just going to stamp this down. Now this is quite a small stamp, so you're not going to need much pressure at all with this one. I'm going to lift that off. And we're going to grab in our scrap paper again. We're going in with the opaque bright white super fine embossing powder. Tap off the excess. And the remainder goes straight back into the jar. Then we're just going to heat this up with our heat gun. So again, it's going to turn really, really quickly and the heat resistant acetate there we go so you can see there how that's all nice and heated up now for the sample what i've what, for my actual finished card sample what i've done is i've done the swirls using a white liquid pearl um like a, the, the cosmic shimmer pva pearl pva or liquid pearls either or it's not very useful when i've still got the the price tag on it is it but this is what it looks like peel that off there we go cosmic shimmer colored pearlescent pva so on the actual finished card and for the sample i've used the white one so it gives you like a pearly effect but i just thought for showing you on camera it's probably going to be easier if i use a colored one so you can see what i'm doing so i've just got the pink one here and literally all i do is 
hopefully not like that we'll just test it out first there we go okay all we do is just put little dots of the PVA if you get a little stringy bit like that don't worry too much about it and you just pop this around your swirl it might look a little bit messy when you first start but what's really cool about these particular pearls is they do kind of self level out a little bit so you can just go along just putting little dots on your swirl I'm not being too kind of picky either about where I put them once I get going I kind of get in a bit of a rhythm for it to be honest so then you can just keep working your way down like so if you kind of put it on the paper and then give it a little press it kind of breaks that little stringy bit I tend to find so we'll just work around doing this piece as well So these are just all the way tracing the swell like so just going in there with your dots of pearl PVA you could be using liquid pearls anything at all like that which whatever you've got in your craft box these were just the ones that I had Okay, so we're just going to work round there we go so if I bring that in nice and close now you'll be able to see how we've got all of the little pearly dots on there hopefully okay so when that dries they're going to dry nice and 3d and then you'll have like your own little pearly swells so I'm going to pop that to one side, okay, so you need to do four of those for your card. So I've done mine in white and then used a white pearl PVA over the top, okay. What you're also going to need to create is some of these little branches and you are going to need six of these for your finished project. So we're going to be using the spring foliage again and we're going to be using the little berry cluster which is a lovely stamp, really useful, fabulous for backgrounds as well. So again, we're grabbing our acetate. I'm going to use a little bit of anti-static on there. And then we'll use our Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad again. Okay, it's really good for, you can tell I use mine all the time. Just ink up my stamp, place down and press. Again, this is just, it's quite a small image this one. So it's not really going to need too much pressure when you're stamping. What we can then do is we'll take our opaque bright white super fine embossing powder sprinkle that over the top the remaining whites going straight back into the jar and then we're just going to heat this up so what we're going to do is hold that heat gun still and as soon as that powder starts to melt and change we're just going to move the heat gun over the image so that's now done just roughly cut around the edge of there and then I'm going to take my dry clear PVA again with the fine tip and the fine tip really comes into its own here so we're going to just put our little dots of PVA onto the berries like so and we're going to use some of our amazing unicorn sparkle sparkle just glitters it is like oh it's just the most amazing color ever just look at the colours in there. It's like pinks and greens and golds. It's absolutely beautiful. But you've got lots of different sizes of glitter in here. So basically, when we put this on, honestly, if you go for the spring foliage stamp set, just, just add this glitter into your basket as well. You will thank me for it later. Just look. <gasps> it is amazing. Okay, so then it like creates like little flower buds on the end of the branches how cool is that i just love this i absolutely love this technique when i was kind of playing around with the stamps i just thought ha, oh, that glitter works perfectly with this okay so what i've then done is you want to stamp your branches glitter them up leave them to dry then when you come to cut them out all you're going to do this is a dry one by the way it's not the one i've just done is you're just going to trim round very roughly around the edges 
you don't have to be kind of too careful or anything like that and that is how i would leave that for cutting out okay so we're going to get assembling our card now. so to do that we're going to bring our card blank back in and i've got all my little elements here i've got my little berry branches that i've already done at home right so this is our beautiful card blank so you can see where we got up to before we're going to start by using a little bit of 3d glue gel just behind the flower so we're going to stick the larger flower in place first and that's going to go up in the top corner here like so again i would if i was making this myself in my own time at home i would kind of give everything a little bit of time to dry um, rather than kind of sticking it together at the point we are now we're going to stick the medium flower to this side here we're going to stick the smaller one just next to it there pull that down a little bit there we go so you can see how fabulous that's then looking what we're then going to do is take our lovely swirls so i'm actually going to just trim a little bit off the end of these a little bit of glue gel just onto the very end like so i'm going to tuck that in behind each flower a little bit off the end of there one as well and then just tuck that in so again i'm just using the 3d glue gel to affix these in place i'm going to take our lovely little berry branches i'm going to tuck one in at the top underneath there one in at the bottom just down there then we're going to put one either side so just at the bottom so one in there and then one in there. Just try and stick that underneath the flower a little bit. Again, because you're using 3D glue gel as well, it gives you that little bit of manoeuvrability. We'll just stick this one. I'm going to just trim the end off that acetate there because it's just a little bit long. Stick one in there. And trim a little bit off the acetate. Just use my tweezers just to lift that up a little bit. And there we go, and pop that one in there. So then you can see how that would then be your fabulous finished card. So all I would do to finish that off is probably add three little pearls just in the top and bottom corner. And that would be your finished card. So I really hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial video. You can check out all of the details on the blog, which is chloe'screativecards.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash news. You can also shop all of the products on the website at www chloe'screativecards.co.uk if you have enjoyed today's video please do subscribe to our youtube channel which is chloe's creative cards you can also give us a like on facebook we are always posting inspiration on there again it's chloe's creative cards and we post daily inspiration on instagram as well again chloe's creative cards so it is so so easy to remember but i really hope you've enjoyed this video and i look forward to seeing you all on the channel again very soon bye